So, uh, last time we discussed the, this uh, non-rational frames and we considered a particular uh, example of motion, uh, accelerated motion, right? Uh, but uh, only a translational uh, acceleration and that too a constant acceleration. Okay. Uh, uh, another interesting set of problems uh, or uh, phenomena that one sees and that and those are actually the ones which we encounter regularly uh, in uh, our environment in, our, in the nature are they deal with a uh, rotation or uniform rotation uh, per se uh, as a non-rational frame. Right? So for example, everything that we measure on earth, all the motion and all the observations, earth we normally consider as an initial frame. However, we know that earth is also spinning around its axis. So in practice or as such, earth is not an initial frame. Uh, with the definition that we gave for initial frames, rather it's a non-rational frame with uniform acceleration, but due to the rotational motion, right? So this is a very important uh, analysis to understand uh, the nature of non-rational frames. So let us now consider this, and again in this now what I'll do is I'll only consider rotation. I'll not mix translation here, right? So let us see, and the analysis is exactly the same way uh, to uh, do. In the sense that uh, we will see the position vector of a, a particle or of a system uh, in inertial and non-initial frames and then see its time evolution. Right? So let us try to do that and let us take, uh, uh, let us say x, y, z is my inertial system. So z, uh, x and y and correspondingly I have these uh, um, unit vectors i, j, k, right, and uh, O is the origin. So this is my inertial system. So O is inertial, right? And now let us have a position vector defined in the inertial system. So we'll call it as R of a point P, right? And now let us say we also have a non-inertial system, right? Uniform rotation, and for this case, then again, what we will consider is <coughs> this is O prime, and we will consider that the origin coincides, right? So we are looking for pure rotation about this, and of course, the rotation is not now fixed around one of these inertial axes; it could be around any normal, right? So that generation we can still take. And to begin with, let us say that. <coughs> Anyway, it doesn't matter if we start uh, with the uh, coordinate axis uh, lying about the initial axis. So let's define this general coordinate system. And let us say this is my x prime. Uh, this could be my y prime. And perpendicular to this, which again need not be parallel to z, is my z prime. Okay? So this is my coordinate system, where again it's an orthogonal coordinate system. However, it's rotating. Right? And it's rotating about with uniform <coughs> angular speed omega, but about a uh, direction n cap, right? So n cap can coincide with j cap or z or k cap or i cap, or n cap could be some other uh, vector direction, right? But it's a constant direction, right? So this is then the rotating frame, so it's rotating in some sense, right? And it also has its own set of unit vectors i prime, j prime, and k cap prime, right? So these are the unit vectors. And now recall that when we're discussing vectors and we introduce these uh, 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 plane polar and then uh, spherical polar, cylindrical polar coordinates, we realize there that other than for the x, y, z coordinate or the Cartesian coordinate system, for other coordinate systems, the unit vectors are not constants of time, right? So their magnitude is constant by definition, <coughs> sorry, their magnitude is constant because they are still describing unit vectors. However, their directions can change, right? And that depends on which point we are considering and how the system is evolving, right? So keep that in mind. And with that information, we have defined this new coordinate system. So O prime is my coordinate system, which is non-inertial. And rotating with angular velocity omega, which is omega n cap. 
right? Okay. Now this is the case. Then now what I can do is I can write down and let's say in this coordinate system, right? The point is this. So of course the position vector is going to be the same, or rather the direction and magnitude of position vectors are going to be the same. However, in the component form it will be different. So for example, in the inertial one. R is written as x, y, z, right? Whatever the components. In the non-inertial frame, this will be the x prime, y prime, z prime, right? With its own set of uh, unit vectors, i prime cap, j prime cap, and k prime cap, right? So this is the definition of R. So now what I can do is I can write down this R as either x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap. Or it's same as x prime i cap prime plus y prime j cap prime plus z prime k cap prime, right? So this is the position vector, and now let us look at the evolution of this position vector. So let us say dr over dt, right? So dr over dt is well in the inertial frame. So again, just to make the point clear, inertial, non-inertial, right? How about the position vector R is same, right? It's constant. So dr over dt could be written in the inertial system as dx over dt i cap plus dy over dt j cap plus dz over dt k cap, right? And this is nothing but, well, uh, I can write it as um, dr over dt inertial right because and why we are calling this inertial is because uh, it's just that time derivative of the components the unit vectors are constant right okay now let us see uh, i mean at least as, as long as we are going to uh, look for the rotation now the same thing this is the same thing for this uh, uh, vector definition so here also we can say that this is equal to d over dt of x prime i cap prime y prime j cap prime and z prime k cap prime right so now on this side then i'll simply write uh, so what i'll do is instead of writing it here as inertia right, i'll just make that change here right so dr over dt inertia is same as dr over dt of this non inertia right? Because the vector is same. And what is this? Now, x prime, y prime, z prime are of course components which are independent on time because the system is evolving. So it's changing its position. However, when the system changes position, in the rotating coordinate frame, i, uh, i cap prime, j cap prime, and k cap prime, they are also not constant of time. They also change as not the magnitude but at least the direction as the system rotates with angular speed omega. So when we take a time derivative, we will have two terms. So dx prime i prime cap plus dy prime dt j cap prime plus dz prime dt over k cap prime. So this same as for the initial case, considering i prime, j prime, k prime as constant, right? Plus, now, consider other than constant and time derivative of these. So, x prime d i cap prime over dt plus y prime d j cap prime over dt plus z prime d k cap prime over dt, right? So, In a non rational frame, right, we have these two terms. The first one looks similar to what we got in the inertial frame, right? So this simply basically gives us the velocity with i prime, j prime, k prime as unit vectors, right? So what we'll do is we will call this as instantaneous uh, velocity in the rotational frame. So let's write it down as v rotation. Right? Because it has the same form as V inertial. We can write this as V this thing. So uh, right now just to maintain the uniformity. 
let me write this down as dr over dt right however in the rotational frame right because only in the rotational frame i prime j prime k prime are constant looking from the inertial frame they do change with time right so then this part is the component dr over dt in the rotational frame plus something extra and what is this extra now this extra we can simplify further by looking at the nature of di prime over dt so i prime j prime k prime these are unit vectors so that means these are vectors with constant magnitude right and their time rate uh, their time rate of change is only coming because of rotation and that to with uniform speed right this we have done before in our rotational uh, uh, motion analysis right and from that information since i prime j prime and k prime are constant what we can do is we can write di prime over dt as omega cross i prime right because omega is the uh, rotational uh, angular velocity right and i prime is a vector with constant magnitude right so all the change is going to follow rotation so we can use this and replace here so let me do that so if we um, if we do that then now we can write down dr over d in the inertial frame is equal to dr over dt in the rotational frame the first term plus x prime omega cross i prime y prime omega cross j prime z prime omega cross k prime right we can write it on like this and now we can take x prime i prime as uh, uh, inside and make this a vector so we'll get dr over dt rotation plus omega cross the vector r right so dr over dt inertial is related to dr over dt in the rotational frame by this so the usual uh, time derivative or the velocity as measured in the rotational system in the rotational coordinate frame and additionally this omega cross r term will come because the frame itself is rotating with angular velocity omega with respect to this inertial frame right so then this is the expression for velocity we can write it down as v in is equal to v rotation plus omega cross r right? this is a position vector okay now we can extend this a step further to do this or to uh, get the equation of motion right and uh, basically acceleration and then from acceleration we can find out what kind of forces are there in an inertial system and in a rotational system so let's do that we will simply do dv in over dt right from here in the inertial system again so if i differentiate this again what i'll get is i'll get d by dt of so let's start from here dr by dt right plus d by dt of because v in we are simply putting the value of v in here omega cross r right so let's again do this and we are not going to do so again what we we'll do is we we'll first write down dr by dt in the way that was written earlier because now we are looking for time derivative and dr by dt also includes these unit vectors i cap j cap k cap primes which when we take a time derivative again will change right so we cannot simply take this as d2 r over dt in the rotational coordinate frame we have to do it from the first principles so this will be then d over dt dr by dt was well we can uh, write down so dr by dt when we wrote down now uh, we got it as um, dx prime over dt i get prime plus dy prime over dt j cap prime plus 
डी जेड प्राइम ओवर डी डी के कैप प्राइम प्लस दिस टर्म सो अगेन डी बाई डी टी ऑफ ओमेगा क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट विद आर एंड ओमेगा क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट विद डी आर बाई डी टी ऑफ डी बाई डी ऑफ आर नाउ सिंस वी सेट दैट ओमेगा इज कॉन्स्टेंट वी आर लुकिंग फॉर यूनिफॉर्म रोटेशन राइट सो दिस टर्म बेसिकली विल गिव अस टू और डी ओमेगा बाई डी डी क्रॉस आर प्लस ओमेगा क्रॉस क्रॉस डी आर by d d and this is nothing right so i can uh, forget about it all i get is this term right okay so now uh, let's okay find this more okay okay so let's look at this one let's find this further so now d v in over d d in the initial frame i'll call it as acceleration in the initial frame is equal to again this will be done in two steps differential uh, time derivative of dx over dt dy over dt dz over dt and then time derivative of i cap j cap and k cap so this will again give us two terms one will be of the kind d2x prime over dt i cap prime plus d2 y prime over dt square j cap prime plus uh, so, uh, j cap prime Plus d two x over d t square k cap prime plus now d x prime over d t and derivative of this i cap prime j cap prime k cap prime so d i cap prime over d t plus the same term plus the same term right so three terms will come from there and that one is simply Omega cross dr over dt, right? And we know uh, what is our dr over dt, so we can write down uh, what that is supposed to give us. So this one is dr over dt, and uh, dr over dt then I can also write down as dr over dt rotation. Plus, because see here, this R is the same, right? So it's the R of inertial frame. So this dr of dt is the of inertial frame. So now, when we write dr of dt, we use the entire expression plus omega cross R, right? Okay. Solve this further. This again looks more or less as done for the inertial frame. This one. Only difference is now this is in the basis of i prime cap, j prime cap, k prime cap. So I'll again write this as a rotation, right? Where i prime, j prime, k prime are considered to be fixed. Plus this one, right? So this again will give us something like dx prime over dt, and then omega cross i prime, and then another term, and then another term, right? Like this, plus omega cross v rotation, right? Plus omega cross omega cross r. Okay. So these are now so many terms, and of course we will write this down in the compact form. So now we can take this dx prime over dt, which is just a number, inside to form the same velocity, inertial velocity. That we form here, right? So this can be taken inside, and the center expansion can be taken in this form. So this then basically gives us a rotation plus uh, omega cross v rotation plus omega cross v rotation. So one more time plus omega cross omega cross r. You can see that the rotation of the coordinate frame brings in so many factors when you look uh, in the non-initial frame. And now I can write this down as a rotation plus with some this so two omega cross v rotation plus omega cross omega cross. 
So then acceleration initial frame is connected to acceleration in the rotation frame like this. And on the other, uh, I mean, in the other way, we can now say acceleration in the rotation frame, right? So the acceleration that you actually measure as an effect of the forces that are applied in the rotation frame is what one would measure in the initial frame. So because of the physical forces minus 2 omega cross V rotation minus omega cross omega cross R. Right? So the acceleration in the rotation frame is because of acceleration due to physical forces plus some terms which are coming purely because of the non-initial nature or rotation of the uh, frame or the, of the reference frame itself. Right? In terms of forces now, I can multiply by M on all the side. So I can write down forces in present in a rotating frame is M A in is simply all the physical forces. So I'll write this as F and now here just to differentiate let me substitute physical. So physical forces as we discussed are the because of the four fundamental interactions that are present in nature and these are the actual real ones. right? Plus I can write here two more terms. One I'll call as Coriolis, F Coriolis and another one I'll call as F centrifugal. Right? And now we can give the definition of these two forces. So these are the extra or the pseudo forces. So this is real, right? In the sense that this comes because of physical interaction, and these two are fictitious. This F Coriolis is then equal to minus 2m omega cross v rotation and F centrifugal is then equal to minus m omega cross omega cross Okay, these are the two forces. Coriolis um, force and centrifugal force. Right? These are the two fictitious or pseudo forces that appear in um, in the rotation frame because of the acceleration of the uh, frame of reference itself. Right? Uh, if you look at these two expressions, then of course these are same expressions that we derived uh, in case of plane polar coordinates when we discussed uh, the vector notations, right? So at that time, uh, I wrote down uh, the acceleration in plane polar coordinates, velocity and acceleration in plane polar coordinates using the relation between Cartesian and plane polar. And there we also, find, so when you write down the acceleration, you find couple of terms in the r cap direction, couple of terms in the theta cap direction, and there I uh, told you that uh, one is the radial acceleration, another is the tangential acceleration, and then you have terms which are uh, called as Coriolis and centrifugal. So this is the origin of those terms, right? There we only did it in terms of transformation of coordinates. Here that same transformation is arising because of the rotation of the coordinate frame, and we have the same set of uh, extra forces or extra acceleration which are there. Centrifugal, the force is uh, this one is termed as centrifugal force and it is corresponding to the acceleration which is called the centripetal acceleration right and from the definition one can see that the centrifugal force is always opposite to the centripetal acceleration okay. the coriolis sway is simply the same of course the direction uh, depends on the direction of omega and v rotation right uh, in case of Uniform circular motion, right, with constant r, right. If that is the case, then this, when I say constant r, that means there is no velocity of in the rotational frame, right. The particle is not moving with any velocity, so Coriolis force will be zero, and 
So with a circular motion with constant r, then omega and r are perpendicular to each other, right? Uh, and then in this case, f centrifugal will be simply equal to minus, well, I mean, okay. Uh, uh, one has to see what are the uh, notations here. However, if I look at just at the magnitude, then this simply will be over to m omega squared r, which is a familiar expression that we normally use. m square over r or m omega square over r. So this is the centrifugal force. The Corelli's one is slightly more uh, different, uh, complicated, not because uh, it has uh, more information, just because we are not used to considering it so often. Right? Most of the problems that we consider in case of rotation deal with the centrifugal force or centripetal acceleration. Uh, before moving on to examples, uh, another interesting thing or important thing that one should note down is direction of these two forces. So the centrifugal force, it's omega cross omega cross r. So it's going to be perpendicular to omega and r and then again cross perpendicular to omega. So it's always going to be in the radial plane. Right? And uh, I will show that, we will see this with examples. But centrifugal force is always in the radial plane. Its direction depends on the relative orientation of these. Right? More, most of it, this will always be uh, radially outwards. Right? Because it corresponds to centripetal acceleration, which is always defined as radially inward. So centrifugal force will be in radial plane pointing outwards. Coriolis force is also omega cross V. So now it is going to be perpendicular to omega, right? And the motion of the particle V. So it again will be in the radial plane. However, its direction will be defined by this uh, uh, vector V rotation. And for systems where there is no uniform velocity motion or velocity, uh, there is no motion in the rotational frame where the system is fixed in a rotational frame and the, uh, from the initial frame we are looking, uh, we are seeing a motion just because of the rotation of the coordinate frame. In that case, Coriolis force will not be there.